In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Dear brothers and sisters, we are on the second Sunday of the Advent season. And the Church introduces us to the figure of John the Baptist. We have so much to learn from his life and example. And his message is pointed. Repentance or conversion. The Greek word is metanoia. And the Hebrew word used by the prophets calling Israel to repentance is teshuba. It means a total change of spiritual direction. A Gentile who sought to be baptized had to make a threefold confession. First of all, to himself, a person has to realize, admit that he is or she is a sinner. The second confession is made to the one who is wronged. This requires a lot of humility. And the third is a confession to God. Only when we say to God that we are sinners, he can say, I forgive you. This threefold confession is also needed in our lives. Only if these three are present, then our repentance can be authentic, can be termed authentic, true, and will last. Let us pause a moment and ask the Lord grace so that our conversion during this Advent season may be true and lasting. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Let us pray. Almighty and merciful God, may no earthly undertaking hinder those who set out in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. Comfort, comfort my people, says your God. Speak tenderly to Jerusalem and cry to her that her warfare is ended, that her iniquity is pardoned, that she has received from the Lord's hand double for all her sins. A voice cries, In the wilderness prepare the way of the Lord. Make straight in the desert a highway for our God. Every valley shall be lifted up and every mountain and hill be made low. The uneven ground shall become level, and the rough places a plain. And the glory of the Lord shall be revealed, and all flesh shall see it together. For the mouth of the Lord has spoken. Go on up to a higher mountain, O Zion, herald of good news. Lift up your voice with strength, O Jerusalem, Herod of good news, lift it up, fear not. Say to the cities of Judah, Behold your God. Behold, the Lord God comes with might, and his arm rules for him. Behold, his reward is with him, and his recompense before him. 
He will tend his flock like a shepherd. He will gather the lambs in his arms. He will carry them in his bosom and gently lead those that are with young. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Your response. Let us see, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. Let us, Let us see, see, O Lord, Lord your, your mercy and grant us your, your salvation. salvation. I will hear what the Lord God sp speaks. He speaks of peace for his people and his faithful. His salvation is near for those who fear him, and his glory will dwell in our land. Your response? Let us see, O Lord, your mercy and grant us your salvation. Merciful love and faithfulness have met. Justice and peace have kissed. Faithfulness shall spring from the earth, and justice look down from heaven. Your response? Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. Also the Lord will bestow his bounty, and our earth shall yield its increase. Justice will march before him, and guide his steps on the way. Your response? Let us see, O Lord, your mercy, and grant us your salvation. A reading from the second letter of St. Peter. Do not overlook this one fact, beloved that with the Lord one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years as one day. The Lord is not slow to fulfill his promise, as some count slowness, but is patient towards you, not wishing that any should perish, but that all should reach repentance. But the day of the Lord will come like a thief, and then the heavens will pass away with a roar and the heavenly bodies will be burned up and dissolved, and the earth and the works that are done on it will be exposed. Since all these things are thus to be dissolved, what sort of people ought you to be in lives of holiness and godliness, waiting for and hastening the coming of the day of God, because of which the heavens will be set on fire and dissolved? and the heavenly bodies will melt as they burn. But according to his promise, we are waiting for new heavens and a new earth in which righteousness dwells. Therefore, beloved, since you are waiting for this, be diligent to be found by him without spot or blemish and at peace. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Kindly stand for the gospel. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Mark. Glory to you, O Lord. The beginning of the Gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. As it is written in Isaiah the prophet, Behold, I send my messenger before your face, who will prepare your way. The voice of one crying in the wilderness, Prepare the way of the Lord, make his paths straight. John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness and proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. And all the country of Judea and all Jerusalem were going out to him and were being baptized by him in the river Jordan, confessing their sins. Now John was clothed with camel's hair and wore a leather belt round his waist and ate locusts and wild honey. And he preached, saying, 
After me comes he who is mightier than I, the strap of whose sandals I am not worthy to stoop down and untie. I have baptized you with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to Lord Jesus Christ. Dear brothers and sisters, we have a similar message in all the three readings today. In the first reading, Prophet Isaiah says, Make a straight highway for the Lord. In the second reading, St. Peter reminds us that God wants everyone to change his or her ways. And then finally in the Gospel, John the Baptist invites the people to prepare a way for the Lord. Although the message is the same, the context of the three readings are different. The first reading is a well-known prophecy of Isaiah, which we often hear during the season of Advent. He was, historically speaking, about the restoration of Israel after the Babylonian exile. The power of Babylon was slowly waning, and King Cyrus of Persia, who would ultimately allow the people to return from the exile, had won preliminary victories. In the reading, the exile is symbolically portrayed as a second exodus. Isaiah assures his people that God will restore their homeland and care for them as a shepherd cares for his sheep. Isaiah originally spoke these words in the 6th century before Christ. But at a deeper level, they foretold the coming of Jesus. And that is why it is right that John the Baptist uses the same words when he is preparing the way of Jesus. The restoration of the fallen world has already begun with the arrival of John the Baptist. What are the mountains and hills that are to be made low? They are hills or mountains of pride or self-exaltation or the mountain of self-sufficiency. They have to be made low if the Lord has to come into our lives. And here, John the Baptist is an example. He says, I am not even worthy to untie the thongs of the sandals of the Messiah. In the Zen tradition of the Far East, there is a story told about a professor who went to meet a great master, Nan In. Master, he said, teach me what I need to know to have a happy life. I have studied the sacred scriptures and I have visited great teachers in the land, but still I have not found an answer. Please teach me the way. At this point, the master, Nanin, served tea to his guest. And he kept pouring tea till the cup was overflowing. And the tea started flowing into the saucer and then onto the table and even cascading upon the floor. The professor could not hold himself back and he interrupted this action of the master. He said, it's over full, stop, no more can go in. The master then said to this professor, like this cup, you are full of your own opinions and speculations. How can I show you the way unless you first empty your cup? So we have to empty ourselves, bring down the hills and mountains in our lives if the Lord is to enter. And what are the valleys to be filled? This is low self-esteem or false humility. We are all precious in the sight of God. We should not despise ourselves. Here too, John the Baptist stands as a contrast while he's humble before the Messiah, he's so self-confident before Herod the Tetrarch and challenges him. Coming to the second reading, it is traditionally attributed to Saint Peter. This 
reading makes it clear that the salvation promised by Isaiah was not completely accomplished by the first coming of Jesus. It is only when Jesus comes again, which we call the second coming, at the end of time, that Isaiah's words will be fulfilled completely. Hence, Peter warns against false teachers who have given up any expectation of the Lord's return. As the years roll by, many non-Christians started ridiculing, mocking the Christians for waiting for the Lord. A few Christians, in fact, also be began to believe that nothing would happen, that Jesus would not come again. To them, St. Peter is explaining that God's way of reckoning time is different from ours. He has his reasons for delaying his, uh, the second coming of Jesus. For, for God, one day is as a thousand years, and a thousand years are just a day. In other words, the risen Lord is eternal and infinite, and so not restricted or measured by time as we do. Waiting is God's rhythm so well described in the Bible. We see how Noah had to wait for so many days for the waters to subside so that he could disembark from the ark. Abraham had to wait for 75 years to be the father of Isaac, the promised son. Joseph, his great-grandson, had to wait for so many years till all his dreams came true. The Israelites had to wander in the desert for 40 years till they were led to the promised land. And finally, the people of Israel had to wait thousands of years for the Messiah to come. Waiting is God's rhythm. We are time-bound. God is beyond time. He has a different timetable. So what should be our response? We should learn to be patient. God is giving us more time to repent of our sins and renew our lives. Secondly, we have to learn to slow down. We are always in a hurry. We, be, uh, we belong to an age of fast food or instant. We want things instantly. Instant coffee or instant noodles. J.K. Chesterton, the famous English writer, has wisely observed if you are on the wrong path, the worst thing you can do is to move quickly. So God now and then will apply brakes to our lives so that we do not go hurtling down the wrong road. It is when we slow down that we become more aware of his active presence in our lives. Christ will indeed come as he has promised. The longer we are allowed to wait for Christ's second coming, the more people will have op an opportunity to be converted and take part in God's glory. We all should wait in eagerness, as St. Peter advises us, to be found without spot or blem blemish before him at peace. Finally, we come to the Gospel. The Gospels of Matthew and Luke begin their accounts with a detailed family tree of Jesus, give us delightful infancy narratives on which we build all our Christmas stories. And John starts with a deep theological reflection on the divinity of Jesus, the Word of God. But this year we are reading St. Mark, whose gospel account we have just proclaimed jumps straight away to the Jordan. Actually, the opening line of St. Mark does not have even one verb. It is more a title to the whole, whole gospel account. The beginning of the gospel of Jesus Christ, the Son of God. Each word is very important and gives us a glimpse of what is to follow. The gospel is not only the good news of Jesus Christ, but even more about Jesus Christ, who is the good news. And then the word beginning resonates the very first line in the book of Genesis when we are told in the beginning God created heaven and earth. While the book of Genesis speaks of creation, Mark is now speaking of recreation that begins 
with the birth of Jesus, the salvation of mankind, which was deformed by sin. And we find John the Baptist in the wilderness. All the people from Judea and all the people of Jerusalem were making their way to him to be baptized and to confess their sins. We are inclined to think that wilderness is a deserted location. In a, in a certain sense, it is. But it can connect us to the sacred, to God. It was in the wilderness that God led his people in the symbol of the cloud by day and the flame by night. It was in the wilderness that the people of Israel learned to depend on God as he fed them manna and slaked their thirst with water from the rock. In the uh, uh, prophet Hosea, we read that it is in the wilderness that God will speak to the hearts of his people. It is in the wilderness of silence and solitude that they heard his voice. John the Baptist is telling us to go to the wilderness during the season of Advent so that we can hear his voice, not physically, but spiritually, away from all noise, spend time in silence and listen to the voice of God. A neighbor of Mullah Nasruddin found him on his hands and knees. He was searching for something. So he asked him, what are you searching? And he said, my key. So both men got to their knees and, began, and continued the search. After a while, the neighbor asked him, where did you lose it, more or less at which place? And Mullah Nasruddin replied, at home. The neighbor was startled. Good Lord, if you lost the key at home, why are you searching it here, outside your home? Mullah Nasruddin replied, because it's brighter here. Where have we to search for God? In our hearts. God wishes to take birth in our hearts. The heart of our Advent preparation is the preparation of the heart. The readings today help us to prepare our hearts for the coming of the Lord. And may this Eucharist help us towards that. Let us profess our faith in God. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, Creator of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, His only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. On the third day, He rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven, and is seated at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. John the Baptist invites the people to prepare themselves to receive the Lord who is coming, that our preparation for the Lord's coming may result in interior conversion and a reliving of our baptismal commitment, we pray, saying... Lord, hear our prayer. Lord, hear our prayer. For the Pope, the Bishop, the clergy and the religious, that they may be guided by the Holy Spirit in carrying out their pastoral responsibilities in the Church, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. That the work of evangelization initiated by Jesus and continued by the Apostles may be carried out by us in our times with the same enthusiasm and vitality demonstrated by the first Christians, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer, that Catholic leaders may imbibe the virtues of simplicity of life while demonstrating firmness in their leadership as shown by the John the Baptist when he confronted the people, we pray, Lord, hear our prayer, for peace in the world that the birth of Jesus, who is the Prince of Peace, may augur a new era of peace and tranquility in a world that is marred by violence and brutality against the innocent. We pray, Lord, hear our prayer. For all of us present in this assembly 
that enlightened by the by today's celebration of the eucharist we may become true discipleship of jesus our master we pray lord hear our prayer god our father we thank you for the gift of your son jesus whose birth has brought life to the world give us the grace that through the faithful observance of the season of advent we may prepare ourselves for the coming of our lord and savior jesus christ we make this prayer through the same christ our lord amen, amen. Blessed are you Lord God of all creation for through your goodness we have received the bread we offer you fruit of the earth and work of human hands it will become for us the bread of life blessed be God forever Blessed are you Lord God of all creation for through your goodness we have received the wine we offer you fruit of the vine and work of human hands it will become our spiritual drink blessed be God forever Pray brothers and sisters that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God the almighty father may the lord accept the sacrifice at our hands for the praise and glory of his name for our good and the good of all his holy church be pleased o lord with our humble prayers and offerings and since we have no merits to plead our cause come we pray to our rescue with the protection of your mercy through christ our lord amen The Lord be with you and with your spirit lift up your heart we lift them up to the Lord let us give thanks to the Lord our God it is right and just it is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks Lord holy father almighty and eternal God through Christ our Lord for he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh and so fulfill the design you formed long ago and open for us the way to eternal salvation that when he comes again in glory and majesty and all is at last made manifest we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope and so with our angels and archangels with thrones and dominions and with all the hosts and powers of heaven we sing the hymn of your glory as without end we acclaim holy 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 lord god of hosts heaven, heaven and earth are full of your glory hosanna in the highest blessed is he who comes in the name of the lord hosanna in the highest you are indeed holy o lord the fount of all holiness make holy therefore these gifts we pray by sending down your spirit upon them like the dew fall so that they may become for us the body and blood of our lord jesus christ at the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion he took bread and giving thanks broke it and gave it to his disciples saying take this all of you and eat of it for this is my body which will be given up for you In a similar way when supper was ended he took the chalice and once more giving thanks he gave it to his disciples saying Take this all of you and drink from it for this is the chalice of my blood the blood of the new and eternal covenant which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins do this in memory of me
the mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and the chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have held us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis, our Pope, and Philip Neri, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Waiting eagerly for the, for the coming of our Lord Jesus, let us raise up to our Father the very prayer that Jesus himself taught us. Our Father, Father who art, art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy, thy kingdom, kingdom come, come thy, thy will be done, done on earth as it is in heaven. Give, give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us and lead us not into temptation but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Saviour, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power and the glory are yours, now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, you said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant a peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of peace. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world. Grant us peace. Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and, and my, my soul, soul shall be healed.
Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Bow your heads and pray for God's blessings. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his second coming, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. Amen. So that rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Thanks be to God. Yeah.